hey boo hey welcome to our welcome back to your girl's channel y'all for today's video i feel like this topic is not discussed enough if if being discussed at all and although this has never happened to me i know that it happens so we gonna talk about it now let's get into it to the girls who got a train ran on them in high school since we all grown now what was the sales pitch for them to get you to say yes okay let's talk about it because i was one of those girls that had a train ran on her I really was. And I mean, it's not anything that I'm proud of, but if no one else is going to speak on it, I'll speak on it. Um, first of all, to answer your question, there is no sales pitch. There's actually no discussion at all. And of course, I can only speak for myself, but I guarantee you majority of the girls that ended up in this situation can relate to it. Um, you're hanging out with a guy that you like and you think likes you. And of course, his friends are around, but you're not paying them no mind. It's just you and him. Y'all go into a room and you begin to become intimate. And next thing you know, you look up and there's four or five guys standing around you waiting for their turn. And there was no discussion. There's no asking. There's just grabbing. There's just touching. There's just inserting. And of course, you have one of two options. You can jump up and say, get off of me, or you can go along with it. And I was just someone who just went along with it because I did not know what else to do. I don't care how many talks you have with your parents about sex and relationships and all that. Nobody is, is telling you about that situation. Nobody is saying, Oh, there might be a time where you're becoming intimate with a boy and all his friends think they can have a turn. Then once you've done it the one time, you start to think, well, why should I even say no? Because I've already done it before and it just becomes a pattern. You know, I saw a lot of people in those comment sections kind of making light of it and joking and being like, oh, I asked my cousin and now she's mad at me. The reason that she's mad is because that's probably something that she put in the depths of her mind. I know I did. I try not to think about it. I try not to remember it. And really, the only reason that I'm talking about it is because that video just like triggered me so bad. And I said, I have to speak out if I'm going to be the only one to speak out. That shit is not fun. And this shit like really fucks with your brain because then it's like, OK, did he ever really like me? Is this what he needs to like me? I was 14 years old and that was literally my second sexual experience ever. And there's a lot of trauma in my life as well, you know, essay as a child and all sorts of things, being the fat girl that no one ever thought was pretty. And so this guy thinks that I'm pretty and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, y'all, please show a little bit of compassion, show a little bit of empathy. Like no one's just running out to do that shit for fun. I'm, I'm just saying. She's right. I don't think any woman specifically signs up for that unless you're doing a porno or something. Women don't sign up for that. It just happens. And I'd, like she said, you know, no conversation that you have with your parents can prepare you for something like this, but still have the talk. Let your daughter know that it's not safe to become intimate with the boy while there are other people around. Let her know that if she ever decides to become intimate, it needs to be her and that boy only because A, B, and C can happen. A, B, and C has happened. A, B, and C will happen. Have the talk anyways. Tell your daughter she can be the one that jumps up and say, hell no, all y'all get the fuck up off of me. Teach your daughter that that is the person that she does want to be, okay? Teach her self-love. Teach her self-respect. Teach her that this is all the boys want. And let her know that after they get it, you may not talk to them again. So be careful of who you give it to. Yes, these talks may be useless at times, but still have the talk so your daughter can know the options, so she can remember that she has options. I am going to have a talk with my daughter as soon as I'm done with this video, to be honest with y'all, because I, I haven't talked to my daughter about this in particular, this type of situation. So I am going to have a talk with my baby, like, as soon as I'm done with this video. <laughs> and I think that you should too. Any woman that you feel you care about and you feel is getting up in age have these types of conversations show her this video let her know that she can say no and who cares about how anybody feels about her afterwards because her living with it for the rest of her life is what's going to really matter in the end and y'all got to remember these types of situations can happen to literally anybody gay straight black white mexican whatever so also talk to your children about the dangers of partying and partying a little too hard we need to teach our kids to be cautious and aware of their surroundings at all times and we ourselves need to not be naive to the situation happening to us okay pay attention to your surroundings too boo men and women 
fathers and single mothers, teach your sons that this is completely unacceptable behavior. Make him understand that this is SA behavior to just invite their to parties it wasn't invited to. Um, I don't know who needs to hear this, but that lady who just explained her train story, that was SA. That was SA. That wasn't... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I need us to start, we do a lot of talking to girls into this society, right? We do a lot of talking to girls and saying, don't do this and don't say yes to this and don't be around this. But we don't really talk to our boys. We don't really tell them how to be upstanding citizens and how to navigate this world in their sexuality. Because not ever, ever in a million years should your son think that it's okay to bust into a room where his friend is being intimate and think that it's now his turn to be intimate with a person without him verbally hearing a yes and without him physically seeing a yes verbally and physically seeing a yes from the person he wants to indulge in <laughs> Ooh, we are so eons behind in this life. That's all I know. When I was 20 years old, I woke up at a party, everybody else asleep, and found a video of me completely unconscious and having a train ran on me by multiple people there at the party. I've survived three times in my life, and it still haunts me today, even though I've gotten past the bulk of my trauma. Now I am very grateful that God has covered me enough for nothing like this to ever happen to me. But I know that it does happen. And we always think, uh, couldn't be me, wouldn't be me. But it could be your child in a heartbeat. And it could very easily be you. So have these talks anyways. And let your baby know, no means no. And she can hop up at any given time and tell everybody no. No means the hell no. Last week... I told you all the story of the train that was ran on me. And it's very, I feel like it's a situation that if you've never been in that situation, you can't really say what you do or... Um, and I, but, and I think it's very, uh, I don't even know the word, but so many people are acting like they don't get it. And they're like, well, you never said no. I also never said no when my mom's husband started touching me. And I just saw someone say, well, men aren't mind readers. I do not have to be a mind reader. I don't think you need to be a mind reader. Um, in this situation, I think it's just something that's not okay for someone to be intimate in the dark, lights off, and you just come into the room and start doing what you want to do. And there's been no discussion at all. I never said no. If they had asked me, I would have said no. So many young women have a similar story to mine about how that happened to them and how people talked about them and how they were fast and butts and whores and all of that. We were never given the opportunity to say yes or no. And I think that it's so unfair to ask, especially young teenage girls, why is it that when somebody started violating you, you did not stop them? Men aren't mind readers, but somehow they read my mind and decided that that was something that I wanted. And the only way for you to know that I did not want that is for me to say no and or start fighting back while you are doing it in the middle of you doing it. If that makes sense to you. <laughs> buy your daughter a taser. Don't let her take it to school and stuff. But buy your daughter a taser. I know mine got one. 
period. Taser, mace, all of the above. Buy that little key ring that they keep all that stuff on. They, they got like a little keychain where it come with a small little everything on it. Which I need to go order me one tonight. Probably got it on Timu for all I know. So go get y'all some stuff and let your kids know. No means no. And your, your, your little boys too. Your little gay boys in particular. But you, If you have gay or bisexual boys out there, tell them to beware. Tell them to be cautious as well. Because boys can easily be raped just as fast as a woman could so everybody is at risk out here but women be careful and look after your daughters and have the talk anyways let her know what's up let her know what these boys intentions are let her know what they gonna try to do so she already be one step ahead of them you know what i'm saying i want my daughter to always be five steps ahead of these little nigglets running around i do so, let me get off of this and go talk to my baby right now, okay? <laughs> That's what I got on it. If you like this video, like this video, boo. Don't forget to subscribe. I love y'all, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Go talk to your daughter now.